Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is part two of my response to the Christian accusation that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was inspired by Satan during his uh, very famous encounter in the cave of Hira. In part one, I debunked this claim using the authentic narrations and I showed examples of what a good dream is and what a bad dream is, a good dream that comes true, which is what happened to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, before the revelation came to him, he was starting to have he started to have dreams that were coming true. So we already debunked that, but but just because I like to preempt the missionaries in the types of arguments they will make, I wanted to deal with this narration. This is in so right now I'm looking at the life of Muhammad, the Sirah Nabi by Ibn Ishaq. This is one of one of the favorite sources for the Islam haters to use. Even though they know that we don't regard Ibn Ishaq's uh, biography of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu with uh, complete assurance. We don't regard it as completely reliable. And today we'll see an example of a narration um, that is completely unreliable. And this, all, this same narration that I'm going to go over uh, is also found in the Tariq al-Tabari, the history of the body, which is also used by missionaries, even though, again, Muslims don't use don't consider that source to be reliable. Uh, if you were to use the tafsir of the body, that's different. In the tafsir of the body, uh, he's very careful when he gives narrations. In the tariq of the body, he wasn't using criticism of hadith. He was just mentioning different reports that he heard, regardless of their authenticity. All right, so we'll see an example of that. So when Christians use sources like Ibn Ishaq or tariq of the body, that would be like Muslims using the Gospel of Mary Magdalene to prove something about Jesus. Christians would respond by saying, well, this is not authentic. We don't consider it to be reliable. It's not inspired. So why do Christians, in a double standard, then use the same, then use the same tactic? They, they quote Ibn Ishaq, they quote Tariq al-Dabari, even though they know that Muslims don't regard them as authentic. They quote forged hadith, they, they quote weak hadith, even though Muslims don't regard them as authentic. All right, so that's uh, that's the first argument, just to, show, to expose the Christian double standards. But let's go over this narration. So this is uh, I have a PDF version of the uh, abridged translation uh, by Gulam of the life of Muhammad. This is on page one hundred five of the PDF version, and I'm looking at specifically this from here to here. And then on the next page as well. But notice, first I want to mention who's involved in the narration. It's Wab bin Qaisan and Ubay the bin Umair bin Qatada the Laythite. Right? Now you go down here and it says Wab bin Qaisan told me that Ubay said to him, so this again Ubay the bin Umair bin Qatada the Laythite, every year during that month the apostle will pray in seclusion. So now he's giving the account uh, based on what he's heard about the, the beginning of the revelation, the inspiration. And we already know the story. It began with true dreams, and he, then he became, then he, the Prophet ﷺ liked to seclude himself, and it would be in the cave. Now, if we go to the next page, the narration continues, and Ubaid says that um, the Prophet ﷺ said, he came to me, while, referring to Gabriel, while I was asleep. All right, so you can see here, it's clearly saying that he was asleep, uh, with the cover letter brocade, whereupon was some writing, and he said, read, and it's the same story um, as found in the authentic hadith, but at the end of it, it says, so I read it, and he departed from me, and I awoke from my sleep. So it's saying that it was a dream. Now, we've already seen that just because, of, even if it wasn't just a dream, uh, it doesn't mean anything, because even though it was something he saw that distressed him, that uh, scared him, I mean, it was, it was a, an encounter with the supernatural that would scare anybody, um, that doesn't mean it was a, a dream from Satan, because we, we saw the example of the hadith in which the Prophet saw uh, two gold bracelets that were placed on his arm, and those two bracelets were actually metaphors for two false prophets that would come after him. One was Al-Ansi, and the other one was Al-Musalama, the liar, Al-Ghazab. Right? So just because you see something that might not be 100% you know, uh, delightful doesn't mean it's from Satan. But here's the problem, though. 
you, know, you have to look at the, we can clearly see that this, this report contradicts the authentic sources. We already saw in this, the Sahih Hadith from Aisha Radulana that the Prophet was awake. It does not say anything about him sleeping, right? And then he woke from his sleep. Nothing is said in those reports. So now we're going to see evidence why this, no, we're not going to reject it just because it contradicts the authentic Hadith. We're going to reject it for other reasons. And now we'll see those reasons. So notice that uh, it is told by Wa bin Qaisan, who said that Ubaid, and this is Ubaid ibn Umar bin Qatada, the Lathite, uh, told him the story. All right, so we need to um, look at into this narration itself. Right? And it's a, so as it turns out, this same narration is also mentioned by, by Tabari in his Tariq, the history of Tabari, and both uh, the Sirah by Ibn Ishaq and Tariq Tabari contain many narrations and not all of them are reliable. All right, if you compare Tabari's tafsir to his Tariq, there's a big difference. In his tafsir, Tabari is much more careful, but in his Tariq, he was just literally just listing any of the narrations that he heard. And there could have been so many different ones and they were contradictory um, by different people, the details are different. So these were not analyzed historically. Whereas in his tafsir, the body was much more careful. So you notice there's the same exact narration that is mentioned earlier, mentioning the same people, uh, Wa'ab bin Qaisan and Umair bin Qatada, uh, Ubaid bin Umair bin Qatada, the Lathite, right? And the Ibn Isaac, and that's the same one right here, right? Wa'ab bin Qaisan, this is from Islam QA, by the way. So somebody asked a question about the narrations where the Prophet ﷺ contemplated suicide, and those narrations are also uh, not authentic. So they were talking about that, and it came up that they were talking about this narration um, in Tariq al Dabari, where it says that Prophet Muhammad dreamed that Jibreel came to him, which is not true. <clears throat> so, again, so it's the same narration, same people, and you notice again here in the second narration where Wahab says that Ubaid said to him, and then he gives him the story which includes the entire uh, dream in the cave at Hera. And notice that it also says, for example, what shall I read? The prophet's response to the, the angel was, what shall I read? Whereas in the authentic narrations, it says, I don't, I can't read. So this is another detail that's different. So they state in this uh, analysis, the text of this report is munkar, meaning odd, and it's contrary to the sound report. So the sound reports we already saw uh, it, the Prophet ﷺ was awake. It didn't say anything about dreams, right? So it's possible that these these later narration narrators they just made a mistake and thought that it was a dream, whereas the sound reports say that it was not. So they say, and so they say uh, in this analysis in this text, the meeting of the Prophet blessings and, uh, and peace of Allah be upon him with Jibreel salam, occurs in the dream, not when he was awake. Right? So in the sound reports it says that he was awake, and then they say also say that. As I pointed out, uh, he said in the narration, what should I read, which is different from the authentic narrations where he says, I cannot read. And so then uh, they look at the isna, the chain. And this is where you have to be careful when you have these narrations. You have to analyze the chain, which uh, Christians certainly do not. And they have no idea how to do this. Uh, so they don't look into all that stuff. So Sheikh al-Albani, uh, may Allah have mercy on him one of the greatest Hadith scholars in Islamic history, said that this is not something with which we do not feel comfortable, especially as it is contrary to what was quoted above of the narration of trustworthy narrators. So they're already saying, look, it contradicts these, the sound Hadith that we already have. But then he also said there are other flaws in the chain. First of all, it is Mursal. Okay, so this is important. Mursal. So now I'm going to read from another, uh, a different book. Uh, this is the Preservation of Hadith, a Brief Introduction to the Science of Hadith by Ibrahim Madani, uh, Madaniya Publications. And we're going to go to, so this is a good book to have. Yeah, it's a very short book, like 40 pages, 50 pages, but it's very good to have if you want to learn about the Hadith terminology and so on and so forth. So on page 26, and the author defines Mursal as a hadith in which a narrator between the first successor, Tabi'i, and the Blessed Prophet وسلم, is missing. And the first successor narrates the hadith saying the Blessed Prophet وسلم, said. So this hadith is missing a, a narrator in the chain. 
there is it, the chain goes back to Prophet Muhammad but it's narrated by a Tabi, which is the second generation of Muslims, not a Sahaba, not one of the uh, not one of the Sahabi. So he says here, Ubayd ibn Umair was not a Sahabi, rather he was one of the senior Tabi'in. He was born during the time of the Prophet, but since the peace of Allah be upon him. But he didn't know him, and he didn't narrate this report from any of the the uh, Sahaba. So that's why this hadith is rated as Mursal. All right, so a Mursal hadith is not a Sahih hadith. It's not considered authentic. He also says there was another person in the chain, Salama. He was honest, but he was prone to making a lot of mistakes. And so this is why this hadith is not reliable. Okay, so even though we already said that even if it was a dream, uh, doesn't mean, mean that it was a bad dream, that it came from Satan. This, this report by itself is actually not even authentic, so it doesn't matter what it says. The authentic sources say that the Prophet Sallallahu actually physically experienced, physically encountered uh, Gabriel, alayhi salam. It was not a dream. Uh, and then we've already analyzed the difference between good dreams and bad dreams, which the Christian troll didn't bother to do, just copied what he saw on the internet.